The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, what, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise What is the greatest, the greatest commandment? Even till today, we seem to, yeah, ask questions. What is the greatest commandment? People like the word love. Essentially, generally, people like the word love. We do, don't we? What a loving community. Huh? We love them. Oh, what a loving family. They're so close together. We love them, don't we? Oh, our faith is all about love. And we want to make love, you know, to make sure that love is everywhere, you know. Make sure, that, yeah. Everybody yeah, loves each other. Love. We know each when it, when it is there. We probably can spot it when it is not there. But what is love? Who do we love? Plenty of questions on a cold morning, Sunday morning. If it's cold for you, you know it's colder for me. <laughs> for very many obvious reasons. I told people that I'm a specialist in the sun. But you guys are specialists in the cold. How we came together, I just really can't tell. <laughs> Love! What is it? Who do we love? You know, it is easy to know who we love when we are hurt and somebody hurts us. When things don't go our way, it is easy to know who we love. When your spouse hurts you, you say, And it's like you're boiling inside. When your child hurts you or your friend hurts you, you say, never, I never go down. No. We can suspect who we really love at that time. When things are going on well, you know, everybody is polite, okay? Huh? Courteous. We're so courteous. You know, you open door before, you know, people go by, you know, and, but when somebody hurts you, then you return to who you truly love. Most times, we don't love anybody. We love ourselves. 
We really, really love ourselves. And because we love ourselves alone, that is the barrier that does not allow us to love God or to love our neighbor. The bar we love ourselves. We love ourselves. We love our own strategies. We love our own plans. We love our own desires. That is all we love. So anything that comes against our desires, anything that comes against our parochial and narrow interests, we fight it. What happens? The selfish personality in us begins to show. We get angry. We get unforgiving. We get nasty. We send hate, we send, so speak hateful words. That is where we should look into right now, brothers and sisters. Look into the depth of our souls and ask, who do I really love? Do I actually love God? Okay, let's test it a little bit. When we set out and say prayers to God and continue to pray to God and it looks like God is not in the business of listening to us at that time. I have met, I have come across people, I have come across young and old who said, you know, when I pray to God and it doesn't seem to be answering me, I decided to pray to someone else. Uh huh. To abandon God and say, yeah, you know, he doesn't care about me. So then, in that situation, you know you are meeting with somebody who is not actually talking about loving God, but actually talking about God loves me. Love me, love me, for and do for me whatever I ask you. So God becomes your puppet. Huh? Isn't it? Becomes a puppet. There is no place for thy will be done. No, no. My will be done. In prayer, whose will actually do we want to be done? Whose will? My will or God's will? We have to choose. Our walk with God is a journey. Our walk with God. I have seen situations, you know, Back where I come from, you know, when a mother ties her baby to herself, sometimes she's not here, it's here. <laughs> so the baby is right there behind, you know. And, you know, babies always have fanciful ideas of things they want to eat. Isn't it? You know, and then the baby is looking from the back of the mother and seeing this stone, but it's shiny and looks like sweet or chocolate. And say, ah, I cry, I cry. She wants that, okay? At that same time, the mother is looking at that pebble there, though it is shining, but knows it is not what? Chocolate. Because the child is crying after that, will the mother give the stone to the baby as chocolate? Huh? You guys have the answer. No. Many times, we are that baby strapped at the back of the mother. And what are we asking for? All the time, pointing at that pebble, calling it what? Chocolate. And God our Father, who is all wisdom, omnipotent God, knows definitely and says, now, when I get chocolate in my bag, I hand over to you. Or when we walk past, actually, uh, why this? Then I'll give you ice cream. Because that's actually what you need at this very time. But because we are carried away by our narrow little interests, we continue crying and pestering and pestering. And sometimes we give up on the love of God and say, if God does not love me enough, then I head in this direction. But you know, there are no options away from God. People who go into the hands of the evil one and enter into the embrace of the evil one of Satan, enter into where they call misery, pain, sadness. Because the devil has never given anybody thing, anything for free. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. 
When I get along with my friends, when they are doing things you know, that goes well for me, he's like, oh, I love my friends. They are, very, they are the best friends in the world. How about when they don't do things that I like? Am I able to go along anymore? Oh, because I love myself so much. I'm not able to transcend. I'm not able to see and be selfless. That's the key. Because until and unless, brothers and sisters, we realize that we must surrender ourselves in order to love God and believe and trust in his holy will much more than my own unless i surrender and take away from me the areas of malice the areas of selfishness the areas of self-love that which has been so much ingrained in our society that which has become like a demon that has become like an idol especially in the social media where people are tearing themselves apart Tearing themselves apart because they want to only follow their own misguided, selfish, narrow, opportunistic path of life. That's all. And then people begin to literally cannibalize their brothers and sisters. We cannibalize and cut into pieces the human beings made in the image and likeness of God. And yet, we claim also that we are pro-life. <laughs> uh huh. And we claim we are pro life. If you are pro life, will you destroy another person? Because that life, anytime malice comes out from our house, what happens? We are killing another. Anytime we allow gossip to go out of our mouth and from our heart, we are killing another. Whether he's a foreigner, whether he's an alien, whether he's a widow, whether he's a stranger, whether he's an orphan, we are killing. Our thoughts, our words, and our deeds must always work according to the selflessness that God treats us with. He treats us with holiness. He treats us with care. And he wants our heart for him. And guess what, brothers and sisters? Because we are basically so selfish, we must surrender this aspect of ourselves. It is only in prayer that we are purified. We go through purification in prayer. Because the Love of God the Father is being poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit in prayer. Romans chapter 5 verse 5. The love of God the Father is poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit in prayer. Do you now see that anyone who does not pray, who cannot pray, who desires not to pray cannot love? Even the love that exists between spouses cannot be possible. It's impossible without prayer. Because the love between spouses comes from God. That love does not come from the license you get from the certificate of marriage. No. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> really? It doesn't come from it, does it? You know it. That's why people say that it's just a piece of paper. That's why they say so. Because they do not know it comes from the altar. And because our church, I'm not afraid to say it, and I'm, not, I'm ashamed even to say it, that our church has failed to know that the Eucharist is the source of the marriage that comes for husband and wife. And that's why we live the way we live. And that's why divorce is so paramount. No, God did not plan that divorce should be as, as, as easy to get as we have it. No, he didn't plan that. He planned that love will endure. He planned that love will be permanent. He planned that love will be fruitful and total. You remember the conversation between Peter and, and, and Jesus? And he said, yeah. Is it lawful to divorce? He said so. Because the extent, he said God made them male and female. 
And so they will be together forever. Why? Because he knows love is true. Love is patient. Look, go and read First Corinthians chapter 13. The, 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 the hymn to love. God did not plan. Divorce is like, it's like the last thing ever, ever. Because you know where? When there is so much divorce in our society, it's because there's so much selfishness also. Because it's all about me. It's about me. It's about me. It's not, that is not it. That's not the true. That is not the true faith. No, 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 no. We made a lot of mistakes. And we shouldn't continue making those mistakes. No. Fruitfulness comes from the Eucharist. Love flows from the Eucharist. Those who marry themselves are ready to die for themselves. Love on the cross is readiness to die. To serve the other. But you know, we always want to be served. We want to be served. Everybody wants breakfast on the bed. Mm -hmm. We ought to be served. Jesus says, I have come not to be served, but to serve. Selfishness. Is what destroys all love. Jesus teaches us selflessness. And that's why he talks about love of God and love of neighbor. To love God means that I, I know I had a nice conversation with students of all saints last week. So I'm asking them, what's your relationship with God? What does it look like? Who is God to you? What name do you have for him? And they told me so many beautiful things. They said, so somebody said, God is my friend. And I said, great to hear that. So, what nourishes friendship? They're talking about communication. They're talking about, you know, hanging out together. They're talking about doing nice things together. And I said, okay, that's great. How much time do you spend with God if he's your friend? If you don't spend time or communicate with God, what happens? They say the friendship collapses, and they know that. So how much time do you and I spend with God? Or all my time is my time? Huh? That's part of the selfishness. A friendship, okay, hey friend, let's go, go on a walk, and then we can pray our rosary as we go. Oh no, I don't have time today. And the next time, okay, let's go eat something, oh, I don't have time today. Eh. What happens to that friendship? It collapses. That's the same thing that happens to the friendship between us and God. The love relationship between us and God. So God wants to give. He wants to give. But you know, because we don't spend time with him, then we become dry. Then we have no love to give. Then we have no life to share. Then we have no witnessing to bring to the table. Because where it is flowing from, the Holy Spirit, which pours love into our hearts, we have cut our relationship with Him. That's why God says, love of God comes first before love of neighbor. If we do not love God, we don't have love enough to love our neighbor. It is there. Attending Mass, participating in Mass, and receiving the sacrament in pure hearts, Hearts that have gone to confession to receive him truly, truly as the love of our souls. Adoring the Lord. Having time to adore before the Lord. Having time to spend time and listen to love. Because the sacred heart of Jesus is burning with love all the time. And to spread that love to us. How is it that people started even wondering, even in our world today, say, oh, you know, someone said that, oh, no, I, I'm not sure I want my son to become a priest because it's a loveless life. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it the greatest heresy you hear? This relationship between you and I that we're having this morning is the greatest of all love. <laughs> Pouring out 
the love that the Father has given to me, I'm pouring it in your direction. So that you then can go out fire with love. And despite the cold, the heart will be warm. Warm with the warmth of the Holy Spirit. The heart will be on fire. The warmth of the Holy Spirit. Where does that come from? That tabernacle. That tabernacle is waiting there 24-7 for only you. And he's been waiting there for 2,000 years to show you what it means to love. I believe in one God. Father of my creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. The only